Hello my darlings and welcome to another bedroom guru with me, Nikki Allo. How the devil are you doing? Today I had some really good news actually. Um, I've just had an email from my publishers to say that the ebook format of my book, Me, Myself and I, Diary of a Psychic, has now been done and it's so exciting because I've been able to get a printed copy soon, which I'm so going to share on here, um, ready for the publication date, which is the 27th of November. So I thought, I was just a bit inspired and I thought, you know what, I might share a little excerpt with you so you know what the book's about. And it's a shameless plug, I'm not going to lie. I need to sell this book. I don't really. <laughs> but it'd be nice. Um, me, myself and I, Diary of a Psychic, basically is a memoir of um, a time in my life, which a lot of you will know about if you follow me on here on Facebook, um, where I had a road accident that led to me getting really severe um, ME or chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia and it led to me being homeless um, without a penny to my name I literally had two dustbin bags and my two little doggies and that was it um, a lot of my trauma from my past came up and I was I was kind of made to realize what sort of um, sense of self I had and what sort of state I was in follow a lot of trauma from my childhood um, and during this five year journey, lots of miracles happened, which you'll find out in the book, um, that have brought me to the most perfect place I could ever imagine in my life, mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually, and materially. Um, and this, book, this is gonna wobble now, because Teddy is gonna start, look, they always, what is it? What is it about my dogs? They sleep and sleep, and then as soon as I start talking in here, that's it. They're either snoring, or they're running around, or they're barking, or they just jump off. He's going to jump back up now. Told ya. You coming over here, Tedsy? Tedsy Wedsy? So anyway, that's the premise of the book. It's a book about hope. It's a book about um, highlighting the voice of so many millions of sufferers of ME and chronic illness um, and fibromyalgia. It's also about the fact we're not alone. It's a message of hope. It's a message that we do have the angel realms and spirit world supporting us, even if we know it or not. Um, and I basically, um, you know, do a chronicle, I, I, I do a journal when I can write during the time that I was at my worst, which was horrific. Um, and at a certain stage in my life, I was told by the angel realms to basically put it into a book and never imagine for a million years it get published. It's very much, a, you know, it's very much a Marmite book. You're either going to love it or you hate it. But if you are spiritually inclined, you're interested about angel and spirit phenomena, interested about psychics, interested about, you know, if you've got chronic illness yourself or ME, fibromyalgia, um, then it's an interesting read. It's an interesting read, well, I hope it is. Um, so I just thought I'd share an excerpt with you. This is um, the first time that anything really happened magically during my accident. And I was very lucky to go over to my friend's apartment over in Turkey. I just want to share this excerpt just to give you a taste of what the book's about. I hope you like it. So, are you ready? Are you comfortable? Then I shall begin. <laughs> so basically, we were out in the pool outside Joe's apartment in Turkey. One day we were floating in the pool by Joe's apartment and a local lady came up to us. She had heard that I was psychic and wanted to know if I wanted to trade readings with a local village seer. I felt a bit apprehensive as I, was, as I was still quite weak and hadn't done a reading for months, but something inside told me to go for it. I walked into a cool shaded room and felt pretty intimidated. It's not only was the seer there, but most of a family. No pressure there then. The link to spirit world was surprisingly easy, apart from the interpreter delaying the messages. The lady's spirit husband and son came through telling me their names. They even took me through the whole process of a Muslim funeral, which I had no idea about. They stated so many facts and foreign words that the smiles of delight and amazement from the family boosted me to deliver a first class reading. They were all so happy and tearful. I think they thought I was just going to do a psychic reading, which is where you talk about life circumstances. So they not only got a psychic reading, but as a medium, they got a direct call with their family members. It was then my turn. In Turkey, the seers mainly do their readings by using the coffee syrup that they prepare in their coffee. I had to drink the strong bitter coffee until the dregs of the syrup was left. I handed the cup to the lady who swirled it three times and then turned it upside down onto a saucer. She then whispered something and lifted the cup. First thing she described were my two little dogs, Teddy and Mia. She described them to a T, even down to their personalities and what they like to eat. She showed me the pattern in the coffee syrup. I was amazed to see two little shapes of dogs. Two 
silly again. I'm talking about you, Ted. You're in the book, mate. Come on, show a bit of respect. <laughs> she stated how important they were to me and that they would save my life and my soul. I didn't really know what she meant at the time. She then talked about my illness and that I would have a very long path back to recovery. I wasn't too impressed with that comment as she was frowning and looking at me with such empathy in her eyes. She spoke of me moving house and that I wouldn't be settled for a while. This is news as I didn't want this. Sorry, this is news I didn't want to hear. She spoke of a flood that would take place as well. Great one, isn't it? <laughs> no, I didn't put that in the book. I didn't put that in the book. To be honest, I wasn't really enjoying the reading at this stage as it felt like all doom and gloom. However, everything she said was so accurate. I felt that familiar friend of fear rise up as she told me that they're not so good stuff. She said I was one with the sea and that's where my journey would end. I didn't know what she meant with this, but I obviously adored the sea. She said that I walked with the angels and the dead and that they would bring me back to a new life. I didn't have a clue what she meant by a new life, so I just smiled. I really didn't have a clue what she was talking about at the time. Oh my God. All in all, I enjoyed the experience, but I wasn't so chuffed with the bad bits, to be honest. I walked out of the house and felt strangely over emotional. I asked Jo for the keys to the apartment as I needed some time out to let all that she had said sink in. When I got into the apartment, I sat on the balcony for a while, but it was too hot. The apartment was slightly cooler, but with the balcony doors open, the heat was still making it slightly uncomfortable. It was 35 degrees outside. I will never, ever forget what happened next. It will be engraved on my heart for eternity. I was still, still feeling emotional, sitting on the sofa, sipping a glass of water. I felt a shiver go down my spine and the hairs on the back of my neck go up. I then noticed the room freeze up like I just walked into a refrigerated food store. I could see mist coming from my mouth and couldn't believe what I was seeing. It was literally a scorching day in Turkey and I was shivering with mist on my breath. That was so cold. I didn't write that bit either. I then heard, as plain as day, hello darling. I jumped, looked up and saw a human sized form walk in front of me from my left hand side. I can only describe it as this. Do you know the film Predator where the alien is walking in a camouflaged state? You can make out his form but it's blurry and magnifies the landscape behind him. Or when you've watched a sci-fi movie and they have a cloaking device, but you can still see the shape of the aircraft. Sorry, that's the only way to describe it. Well, that's what I saw. The shape then stopped and my breath caught in my throat. The face on the body formed and it was my dad smiling at me as if he was alive and present in the room. I remember staggering out the word dad in between hysterical sobs. He nodded and then sat down on the chair next to me. I was so shocked. Normally you see spirit forms in a blink of an eye. The main way we see them is through clairvoyance, where you see spirit people in your mind. To have your dead dad sit next to you in an armchair in normal time is unheard of. I could still see his face clearly, but the rest of him was transparent with a white mist and light swirling around his body shape. He was beaming at me and I was howling like a nutter. I just couldn't get over the fact that I was staring right into my dad's face and he wasn't disappearing. He then stopped smiling and looked at me with such love and sadness. I haven't got long, Nick. You've got to listen to everything I say and you have to trust me. I just nodded silently. You're going to go through the worst time of your life and I'm so sorry about that. You look like he was crying too. But trust me when I say you will get through this and you'll come out the other side working like you've never worked before. You will have a deeper spiritual understanding and a whole new life. You will have knowledge beyond anything you could ever imagine. You will work in a different way and you will have so much wisdom. Don't let men or people get in your way. They will ruin where you need to go. This is about you. You must do everything from now on for you. Do you understand? Yes, I sobbed. I remember this. Oh my, I was on the floor. I tell you, I was bloody hysterical. So I didn't mind that bit either. I just thought I'd, you know, enhance the situation, darlings. Yes, I sobbed. Daddy, I'm so scared. Please help me. I miss you so much. I've never cried so hard in all my life. Here was a man I'd yearned to see since I was a nine-year-old child. This was a man who, if he hadn't have died, I wouldn't have been abused and have a shattered family. The kaleidoscope of pain and... Oh, look, Teddy's coming out in... Um, <laughs> he's crying as well. <laughs> All right, Ted. Itchy nose. This was a man who, if he hadn't have died, I wouldn't have been abused and had a shattered family. The kaleidoscope of pain and sadness whirled through my whole being as I looked into his beautiful blue eyes. I then saw him look up to the corner of the room. I sensed he was about to leave. Please don't leave me, Daddy, I wowed. I felt like that scared nine-year-old again. Listen, he said sternly. Look for this sign. A picture then formed to the left of him. It was a weird triangle shaped hill with the sun shining behind it. I then saw the name Dave and Michael written up. This is 2016. This, I think, 
is 2013, by the way. This is set in 2013. That was, that was a date that I was away, I think. 2013. I think it was. Oh my God, I don't know. Was it 2012? Anyway, it's quite a few years to go. This is 2016. When you see this, you must remember that this is near the end of your bad times. In 2018, your new life will begin. But you must hold on and trust us until then. You must also write. I then saw a mountain symbol, which then turned into a triangle. I wondered if it was a publisher's logo, even though I'd never seen it before. He then stood up. I remember screaming, no, daddy, don't go. Please don't go. He started to walk past me and then stopped. It will be OK. I love you. That just floored me. I'm not going to lie. Don't like that better. I then watched his form disappear into the corner of the room. I was in shock for a long time. I cried for what seemed an eternity. I kept thinking about what he said, repeating over and over in my mind. Archangel Gabriel had obviously granted him a visitation. I knew these were allowed when things were critical. I knew there was worse to come. But another five years until everything changed for the better. What the hell was I to go through that would warrant my dad visiting? I shakily wrote in my soul journal every word he had said so that I wouldn't forget it. I then laid on the bed and that's when the current dream began. So there you go, my darlings. That is a little excerpt from my book, Me, Myself and I, Die of a Psychic. It is currently on special for 11.49. Ah, hello. People, hello, darling. It's currently on sale for 11.49 at promotional price. So get in there if you want to now before it goes back up to the full price of 13.99 at Amazon. If you look on the descriptions below, you will see a link for the book. Um, I just thought I would share that with you just to give you a bit of a flavour of some of the things that took place during, during the time of my recovery and journey. So I hope you enjoyed it. Are half of you asleep now. This is a bedtime story for you. I hope you enjoyed that little bit because um, it really starts getting a bit saucy after that. And uh, please go up over to Amazon and give it a look. Give it a pre-order. It's out on the 27th of November. Um, but, you know, perhaps it'll, you'll get it quicker if you pre-order it. I don't know. But as I say, it's on for a promotional price at the moment. The ebook will be coming up as well very shortly um, on there. Um, and I just would like to say I really hope you enjoy the book and please let me know how you get on with it. Um, I know it's a bit preemptive because it's over another month yet before it comes out but I thought I might as well give you a little taste and let you know what it's all about because I keep plugging it, let's face it, in all my videos so I thought I might as well tell you so without further ado, I will love you and leave you take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you very soon lots of love, bye now